Today I will do something slightly different to my usual videos. We will build a coffee machine, specifically a standard Gajarino build. If you are not aware of the Gajarino project, it is basically a replacement controller for manual espresso machines, initially developed for the Gaja Classic, but it also works with other machines that have the same way of operation. It gives the machine actual PID temperature control, pressure profiling with a pressure sensor, automatic pre-infusion, dose based on time or weight using actual scales under the drip tray, and also has pump assist during steaming to hold the pressure up for small boiler machines. It was originally developed for the Arduino Nano, but the project shifted towards the STM32F411 instead as a direct replacement. It can be built from readily available modules or with an official PCB. We will take a look at both, but we will use the PCB in the end. The first step was to take apart the machine because it needs some deep cleaning and it makes the next step easier. The original Gaja Classic only consists of a boiler, two thermo switches for water and steam set points, a pump, overpressure valve, and a three-way valve to release the pressure after brewing. No fancy timers, PID control or any electronics involved. It's all controlled by the three switches on the front. Many other machines also use a similar setup and will work with this project too. In this case, I actually got the original Gaja Classic as a used machine, which this project was developed for. It also had a broken weld holding the inner bottom piece in, which made the whole machine a bit wobbly, so I added a screw for stiffening, which actually came in very handy for mounting the PCB later. It also, after cleaning, required a few replacement components like seals, a new pump, and the aluminum shower plate, so it had to be fully disassembled anyways. Initially, I planned to mount the screen in place of the original switches and replace them with nicer lever switches below, but uh, didn't do that in the end and just used the original switches and mounted the screen on top, like in other builds, in case I or a future owner wants to convert the machine back to stock or use a different controller, as these modifications would have required me to widen the cutout and add three additional holes for the switches, and drilling already one for the stiffening screw in the back destroyed my drills because the case is made of pretty hard and smooth steel. After removing the boiler assembly, this is pretty much what you are left with. That's the whole coffee machine just here on the table without the case. So for a first test, I was setting everything up on the desk with separate modules while waiting for the components for the all-in-one PCB to arrive. But for the load cells, I already used a more compact dual HX711 board. For the screen, you need to flash the UI with a microSD card. I had to try three different ones until I found one 16GB card that worked. It must be less than 32 gigs and FAT32 formatted, but I also had a freshly formatted 4 GB card that did not work and got stuck in the update process. I have connected the project now on a breadboard with the ADC, the dual HX711 board, the two scales, the uh, thermocouple adapter and the display. And uh, I noticed for this dual board, I had to uh, cut the JP11 uh, jumper. The JP11 jumper connects the internal 3.3 um, volt regulator and the 5 volt input. And when I want to use the regulator, this has to be cut. And uh, by default, the scales are using an open drain on the clock. And uh, this board also does not have the pull-up resistor, uh, like it is recommended in the uh, schematic of the project. 
So I had to define the single HX711 board in a um, custom environment with uh, this option. And uh, now the scales work fine. The problem is if it is uh, set to open drain without the resistor, I could have just added the resistor on this board, then um, it will not work and there will be no clock of course. I also printed a case that isolates the bottom of the board and should provide some extra protection against moisture. This was then mounted inside the machine at the previously installed screw. Getting all the wires connected was quite tricky. It is not possible to keep the thermocouple connected because the wires interfere with the screw in this case. The original thermal switch gets replaced with a thermocouple. Uh, this is the lower one for the standard operation and the upper one for the steam function is bypassed completely. Make sure to add some thermal paste and screw in a thermocouple in place of the original temperature switch. So now let's take a look at the wiring. I think I got it figured out. Um, I mostly looked at the schematic and built it according to that. Mm, I tried to reuse as many of the original wiring as possible. And I have of course also labeled all the connectors which were on um, this main switch module. So here this one, uh, they are all labeled. This is one, P, two, these are all labeled P. So I've labeled them P1, P2, P3, P4. One, two, three, I think four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the red one would go to the pump. So I will just take one of these and connect it to P. This blue one goes to the three-way valve. So this goes to header three. Um, these are as they were before. This is just the power switch. This one is um, the neutral for the light on front. So this is the only neutral, neutral connection. Um, and I need to take one off for this module. So I chose to build a little adapter piece here for the freeway valve. Let's take this off. So this is just a, a splitter. Um, yeah, this white one would uh, bypass the temperature switch for the boiler, which would be down here. I replaced this one with the thermocouple and the other uh, thermal switch was bypassed with a link. This would be for the steam. So now it is completely controlled by this uh, solid state relay. And this would then connect to the uh, terminals which go to the other um, thermal switch like this. But I have not mounted this yet. And um, yeah, the live and neutral were uh, taken once from the power switch. In this case, in this schematic, life is blue, which is not the standard color, uh, but this is how it is labeled in the schematic. So I reused the blue cable. Uh, so this switch will also switch on this module. And uh, you also have to take care that this is the 230 volt version, of course. 
and um, the schematics on the Gajuino project are for the 120 volt version, uh, which is a little bit different. So on the 120 volt version, the uh, heating elements are wired in parallel. Here they are in series. And there are also other colors of the wires. And um, <coughs> yeah, this cable goes to the switches. So this is just a link for the ground. And uh, this is the steam switch and the brew switch. So it just detects when it is switched on and it's completely controlled by this uh, microcontroller now. This means we also cannot use this light on the brew switch anymore uh, because usually this would expect um, line voltage between these terminals, which means this would be either neutral or live. And that's now connected to ground of the microcontroller and we cannot have that. So I have decided I want to reuse the original pressure hose so I don't have to um, flatten the end piece myself on the new one. So in this case, I will just cut off the original one around here. So we can put the T piece um, next to the wall of the original machine, which would be kind of here. And uh, then we will take this adapter for the a pressure transducer and bend it kind of down like this so I have a little bit more space and I'm more flexible where I want to put it. While putting it back together, I made sure to keep all the new non-silicone wires as far away from the boiler as possible and also keep some space between the thermocouple wire and the power wiring. Getting the PCB in the back was difficult, but it was a good spot in my machine because it fits in pretty tight and has the maximum distance to the boiler. The uh, casing of the scales goes under the machine, kind of like this. Okay, it's time to turn it on. Now let's turn it on and let it uh, flow through for a bit to clean it all up. Let's use the flush function. And when the pressure in the boiler goes too high when idle, as you can see, I have set it to 8 bars now, it will automatically reduce the pressure. Now the final step is to add a housing for the screen and a cover. I will just use the usual um, project which most uh, Gajuino users use, which is a cover which goes over the water fill port and um, houses the screen on the left side. So first there is this cover for the water fill port. Uh, you can just take a piece of filament and put it in as a hinge. And we push the screen into these 
left end of So uh, this part is designed to fit some M4 nuts for the hinges. Uh, you need to add a little bit of super glue so that they stay in there, otherwise they might fall out. And then on this side there is a notch under this nut we glued in, which will serve as the hinge. So we need to push it in from this side very carefully. Wait, other side of course. And then push it together. It should look like this. Now lastly we need to put in the new distributor plate. This was the old one. I bought a brand new one because the old one, yeah, it looks pretty crusty. I tried to um, clean it a bit but I wasn't really successful and it's also leaking because there is a chunk missing. So this is how it currently looks like. I will still try to tidy up the wiring a little bit, um, but this is pretty fine at the moment. Uh, with the controller in this spot in the back, we should still be able to fit the original uh, water filling funnel, which is mounted to the uh, top cover. Of course, we need to reconnect the grounding wire the top and it should now barely slip between the power supply and the overpressure hose. This plate in the front has to go under the plate. This will also hold in the switch. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon, allowing me to get the required components and take the time to document all of this. At first, I did not plan to make a video out of it, as I had almost no espresso knowledge before this project, but documenting the build might help someone interested in converting their machine too. So grab a nice cup of coffee and thank you for watching.